Hello and welcome to another review of Drones Visual. As many of you know, Yichain is always very busy releasing new quads to the market, especially FPV racers. One of the latest FPV racers from Yichain is the Aurora 100 that I have over here. Uh, this is considered or at least labeled in the box as a micro FPV racer, but it's certainly not the smallest FPV racer uh, with brushless models that I have reviewed from Yichain. If you recall, before I did a review of the Chaser 88, which is way smaller than this one. If you want to check it out, you can see it in my list of videos. Now, I tend to be very selective with what quads or FPV racers from Yichain I want to review, because I know they produce many, but I try to uh, only review the ones that are considered the best because I don't really have time to review them all. So I'm trying to be as selective as I can. Uh, the Rota 100, uh, I believe is one of those uh, nice micro FPV racers from Yichain that uh, is worth talking about it. So I'm gonna do a few videos about it. I'm gonna do an initial video here, sort of like an unboxing. Uh, I'm gonna show how to bind it with the FrySky QX7 uh, transmitter. And in the next videos, I'll do more of a FPV flight test and I will also show uh, how to configure it in beta flight uh, and so on and so on and so on. So as you know, this little fellow comes in three versions, one that is compatible with DSM2 and DSMX uh, protocols. The other one is compatible with FlySky protocols, really nice for beginners, as many beginners have uh, FlySky uh, transmitters. And the last one, which is the one I have over here, is compatible with FrySky uh, protocols. Once we open the box, we will see the instructions manual. And something worth mentioning about this instructions manual is that it's really well made. Once you open it, you will realize that the diagrams and all the instructions are uh, well represented, uh, something that it has not been the case with many Chinese products, but this one is really well made. It, re it reminds me a lot of the ones that come with the King Kong FPV racers, which are uh, explicit and well made. Then we also get this tiny little uh, strap to hold the battery in place and also uh, these velcro uh, sticky pads which you could place at the bottom of the fpv racer to also hold and keep the or keep the battery in place we get a tiny little screwdriver and a hex key properly to secure uh, the props yeah i'll tend to believe it's for that then we get the props and something really nice about the the props is that they come included also with the nuts check it out because you know you usually get the props but you don't really get the nuts but here you get both you get the props and the nuts so i really i'm really happy about this then uh, here is the battery this is a 7.4 4 volts 450 milliamp battery and it says that it has a discharge rate of 50c i mean 80c uh, i would like to check that out later <laughs> i mean that would be cool actually for this little fellow and here is the eChine Aurora 100. It looks really nice, as you can see. Something really cool about the Aurora 100 is that it comes with the so-called mini cube, which basically includes uh, the ESCs. In this case, these are 10 amp ESCs running BL Heli S firmware. Really nice. It also includes an Omnibus F3 uh, mini flight controller. Uh, also really cool with Betafly 3.1. And in this case, it also includes basically the uh, the receiver, which is FrySky compatible, but in depending on what version you get, it might be uh, DX compatible or uh, FlySky compatible. If we take a look here at the front section, you will see the tiny FPV camera, which is secured by this uh, red aluminum flame frame. And this is a 600 TVL camera, which is basically connected to a 25 milliwatt FPV transmitter. The motors, as you can see, these are powerful motors, 1104, 7,500 kV, and we will test them later when we take uh, the little fellow out for a flight test. Now, if we check the upper section of the quad here, we will see the antenna popping out and the antenna is directly connected to the FPV uh, transmitter. So basically, if it breaks, you might need to actually replace the whole unit or maybe you will be able to solder it. Then we have the tiny frame holding the camera and the camera there in the front. If we move here to this section, you'll see the bind button from uh, the receiver. Remember, this is the FrySky compatible version, but there are other versions compatible with DX and FlySky uh, protocols. Here is the antenna coming out of the receiver. And you might see here on the right side, the square over here, this is the buzzer. And uh, uh, that's really nice that it comes already also 
included with the with the quad and you don't need to be soldering or anything like that really nice to have a buzzer with these tiny little quads if we move to the rear section we can see the tiny little led strip which uh, maybe you can see it here it's wired and probably connected here to the flight controller if you can see with these wires coming over here so really easy to replace i guess if it falls in a crash or something like that really easy to unplug and plug uh, and very clean design here on the back, you can see it. Then if we move uh, to the lower sort of bottom section, you can see that this uh, lower uh, carbon fiber frame is full of apertures. You know, this could make the quad really light actually, and also help to cool down the electrical components. I believe that this plate is around one millimeter thick. So think about it, pretty light, although it might be a little bit fragile. Then we have a GSC connector for the battery. Remember that if you're getting batteries for this little fellow, uh, make sure that those batteries have also a GST uh, connector so you don't run into problems. If we measure the quad here from front to um, from the rear section, you can see that it's around 80 millimeters, almost 90, I would say. And then if we take a look here from the side, you can see that it's 32.7. I mean, I'm just showing you in case you want to make a, a small case for it or something like that. If we measure it diagonal, diagonally, we can see that it's around 150 millimeters, I would say. Yeah, so in case you want to make a foam case for it, you know what to look for. Let's take a look at the weight of this little fellow without the battery, but with the props. And this says 62.7 quite light now i'm going to show you how to bind it with the tyrannis qx7 and uh, remember that there are other also options available like fly sky compatible and dx compatible uh, aurora 100 but i'm going to use the tyrannis q7 because the version i have is compatible with this uh, transmitter the first thing i'm going to do is create a new model or rename a current model and name it uh, Aurora 100. You can of course name it anything you want, but just because this min mini uh, micro racer is called Aurora 100, I'm gonna use that name. Then remember before binding to select here D8, otherwise you might have some problem, you know, in case you're trying to uh, bind it, but it doesn't work, go here and change the setting from D16, uh, which is the default one, to uh, D8. Now, before binding, uh, there's something we'd actually need to do. I mean, it doesn't need to be before. You could do it afterwards, I guess, but I'm going to do it before actually binding. And that is uh, assign three switches or three channels that are kind of important because uh, you see that here we have basically a throttle aileron, elevator and rotor, right? And that's okay to control the quad and stuff like that, but we also... Uh, need to assign a switch, for example, to uh, arm the motors. We also need another switch to uh, um, for the flight modes, and we need a third switch or channel for the buzzer in case you know we want to activate the buzzer at will. So basically, we go here to this mixer section in the QX7, and uh, we will assign the first uh, switch. To, we will assign the function to lock and unlock the motors. In this case, I'm just going to name it ARM because I guess it's easy to remember what that does if you name it ARM. But of course, you can again, you know, assign any name you want to to the switch. I mean, you probably all know this, but just in case some of you there have this transmitter and, and I'm not quite sure, that's why I explain so much, but I know that many of you uh, know this well enough. And then again, we're going to go ahead here and select what switch we want to use to um, arm a disorder motor. Preferably, you would use a two position switch, but it really doesn't matter. You know, you can go ahead and, 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 and select any switch for that purpose. Um, I mean, you don't have to select the same switch. It's all a matter of preference. Uh, you could do uh, select the same, the same that I'm selecting, but I mean, it's really an open choice. Once you do, you select OK, and then we can go ahead and proceed to uh, select the next switch, which is going to be uh, flight modes. Yeah, we have now assigned a switch that I'm going to use to uh, lock and unlock the motors. But we also uh, need, remember, two switches more, one for the flight modes and the other one for the buzzer. So 
uh, for the flight modes, I, I mean, it's really also personal, but uh, I think it's the best idea to have three uh, modes, maybe one stabilized in case when, when you want to land the quad, you know, you want to maybe have it in stabilized mode, makes it a little bit easier to land. And then you could, for example, if you if you kind of like learning at this point, you could have maybe Horizon has a second flying mode uh, or air mode if you're doing some kind of uh, cool stuff. And maybe you could also have uh, Acro as a third flying mode. It's all a matter of preference. I usually have maybe uh, angle mode, then horizon and then acro or like vice versa. Maybe have acro first and so on and so on. It's really up to you what you do. But as you can see here, I have uh, named this uh, mix uh, flight modes. And then I'm going to proceed to assign a switch, a three position switch in my case, uh, to the flying modes. Okay. Uh, is, I mean, the Terranis makes it really easy to actually assign switches. So you basically uh, select this uh, function here and then you tell um, the transmitter what the source will be just by uh, activating that switch. Okay, so pretty much we have selected now our switch for the flight modes and there's only one switch remaining, which is the switch that we're going to use to uh, activate or deactivate the buzzer. And I think it's a really nice thing to have a buzzer with this little fellow because I've, I was, for example, flying before the e Chine Frog and I didn't have a, a buzzer in that quad and there was no, uh, it was really hard to find basically afterwards. Uh, I could see it uh, with the FPV goggles, but there was so much grass. Uh, so it took me maybe like 40 minutes to find it. So that's why it's a great idea to have your buzzer here and a switch assigned to it. So in case you're flying and you lose it, uh, this thing beeps so loud that there is no way you're going to miss it. So that's going to be our last and uh, third uh, channel. And let me rename it here. Just I guess just buzz will do. Don't need to write the whole word. It takes quite some time to uh, write it down here. So, okay, I'm going to go ahead then and um, assign then uh, the source. And let me use this switch over here. Okay. Wait. Yeah, maybe this one. <laughs> it's hard to decide because the Tyrannis has so many switches. So it can be a little bit hard to decide at times what switch to use. But anyways, now uh, the transmitter knows uh, what switch I'm planning to use for the buzzer. And that's all good. We can then uh, exit this uh, mixer section. Press OK here just to save it. And we have now completed. Uh, we have assigned all basically these uh, three channels. So, okay, now the next thing we, that I'm going to do, although you could have done that before, is to bind the transmitter with the FPV Razor. I go here in the, in, with the section here that says bind. Oh, and remember, once more, have here D8 in mode. If you have D16, you'll run into uh, some problems. Now, once you press bind, the transmitter will start making this funky sound and letting us know that the binding process has begun. And then this can be a little bit hard to do just with one hand or even two hands. You will press the bind button in the receiver over here and you will proceed to power on the quad. After you have done this, you can then release the bind button in the, re in the receiver, right? And then you wait for a few seconds for the binding to take place and then you can go ahead in the transmitter and stop stop it from uh, from doing the binding. Basically, when the quad is bound, that LED light should not be blinking. It should just uh, stay uh, like this. And then you will know that the binding process has been completed successfully. OK, so this will conclude the first part of my uh, review of the eChine Aurora 100. In the second part, I'm planning to do then uh, all the setup in Betaflight. 
and uh, probably in the same part or in the next video I might also take it out for an FPV flight or I might do it in the third video depending uh, how much time uh, I will have but anyways I hope this uh, first part was useful and uh, definitely wait for the second part and maybe third so I hope to see you all in my next videos if you're interested in the topic of drones and would like to get the latest news directly from China uh, please do subscribe to my channel Hope to see you all in my next video.